Read through educational, not fake news. Good morning. It's the 13th of November. Uh, it's cold. There's snow in, in um, Tennessee and there's snow in Donegal and Leash in Ireland, in the Irish Midlands and the Irish Northwest. I once had a wind turbine. Here's the blade. Belonged to my father and I installed it. That there is higher than me. It's about uh, two meters high, that, 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 that blade. And it has the turbine effect on it. And uh, it was a direct drive. And here is the bear of a generator. Oh, it was a rewound Dodge truck generator. I'll just leave it down. And um, <coughs> that would generate current when you drive it with your hand. And we used to have it powering a tree house. And it would blow the bulb and sometimes there'd be no power. And then uh, we've got a battery and that just delayed. You had a bit of power for a while after the wind died down. But uh, it wasn't a great success. Now, uh, so we're just looking here at clip 17R. Um, wind on his knees, Eddie O'Connor. Now just to say, I was only about 14 when I had that. I put it up on the top of an ash tree. I was very lucky it didn't hit me on the head. If it had hit me going round, uh, my father wasn't too pleased about it. But anyway, that was it. So um, we'd, uh, we'd a wee attached house at the bottom of it. And we'd read the Beano and magazines and uh, all that sort of stuff. Children's stuff when we were young. So um, so we're just going to look at this now again. 17 or on wind on his knees and Eddie O'Connor. And you don't need any introduction on what I think about uh, wind energy. And just to say about our dossier, our dossier is 47 pages long. And there has been some progress. I got on to a particular member of the Irish Parliament, Irish legislator, the Oireachtas we call it, an elected uh, member of it. And uh, I won't say whether it's a he, she or a them. Uh, I won't discuss anything about them. But one thing they did tell me was that it was very long. That I won't get people to read it. It's hard to believe that you won't get people to read 47 pages of very widely spread material. So I've condensed it down and just taken part six. So the object of the exercise now has moved to getting them to read part six alone because there's about 20 companies there and they're an absolute disaster. I mean, nobody could read them and, 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 and not see that there's something going to happen. This can't go on. Now, an interesting wee bit of news is this, this report. You mightn't be able to see it there. It's from Reuters News Agency and it's backed up by other news agencies. And don't forget, here in Ra Ra in Kingsford, the wind farm is, is, has five Enercon turbines. So Berlin Reuters reports that Germany's Enercon, the world's sixth largest turbine maker, is cutting jobs, 3,000 jobs in total, or 17% of the staff, a report has, has, has found. Uh, the, the, the group competes with Denmark's Vestas, Siemens, Gamesa, General Electric, as well as Nordex, and relies heavily on the German market, which has a sharp decline in turbine installations. Enercon is not immediately available for comment, uh, for comment uh, on the cuts, which are reported by several German media. I'd say it's genuine, all right. In its latest auction last month, German network agency awarded 204 megawatts of wind capacity, less than a third of the 675 on offer. So it seems that there was only a take up for an offer of two, 204 megawatts when anyone could have got 675 megawatts. What's that, about a third? It's, not, it's less than a third. So there's nobody buying wind or putting up wind anymore. They're not investing in it. The crisis of the energy shift has reached us now too. Enercon boss Hans Dietrich Kittler Kitwick, Kitwick, was quoted uh, as saying, without being more specific, the government has pulled the plug on us. The government is to blame for the wind not blowing. Now, now another interesting one. My old friend, I'll give you a look at him here, Eddie O'Connor. Eddie O'Connor was the chief executive of Board Namona, which last month needed a 31 million euro bailout, and it appears there's no pension fund put aside for workers or anything. He was there, he done the Divlin all, he was the hero, he went off to set up mainstream renewable power, and as I understand it, they were all ready to go off to do the Midlands Wind uh, building. He specialised in building them, selling them on immediately, he admitted that in the paper, and by the way, he said, he accused somebody in Ireland of having farting cows, and I'm the only campaigner with cows. 
uh, my cows <laughs> got very annoyed about it. Some of them went off their milk, but anyway, um, for a while. <laughs> So anyway, I, I, that's just another, a bit of fun. We might as well look at the funny side of these things as well. But um, anyway, this report is by him. He was addressing uh, a meeting in, uh, I think, in London. And uh, just read it to you, if you don't mind. Uh, mainstream founder O'Connor says rock bottom prices and market skewed to fossil threatens climate change fight. So now he's speaking to climate. It's all climate change, right? His windmills are going to save the climate. Uh, the industry is on its knees. On its knees. You can Google this yourself. There it's there if you want to Google it. The industry is on its knees. So, uh, the industry is on. After seeing its profitability wiped out by falling prices. Now we're going to take a look at that in a minute. It's not the prices of the wind the wind into the grid. That's the same. That's the refit price has been there for 10 years. It's 76 cents roughly. In no, and the industry is in no fit state to do what's needed to fight climate change, claimed renewable energy pioneer Eddie O'Connor. So he's a pioneer. Yeah, there's that wind turbine there. My father had it in 1940, and my father's not a pioneer at all. And Eddie O'Connor is a pioneer. This didn't work, and I had it going as a, as a teenager, and it didn't work. And yet I'm not a pioneer. So he's a pioneer now. So the thing about it is Chair, O'Connor, chairman of, Glo of Global Wind and Solar Developer, Mainstream Renewable Power, who rode into Bill Rara, only for him, this thing had never be built here beside me in Kingsford, told an industry conference that the price decline seen in recent years combined with the continuing freedom of fossil fuels to operate without penalties for their emissions means there is extreme there is an accidental risk out there until we get some price back into the market until we get paid for the products we sell at a decent price and that includes some price for pollution so straight away he calls co2 pollution now in this wind farm here alone at 12 megawatt wind farm there have been about four heavy machines running since february <coughs> there has been thousands of tons drawn in of, of gravel for lanes and roads there have been um, thousands of tons of cement. That's in the dossier. And there has been, it's all quantified there. And then all the others. All of this massive amount of carbon pumped into the air. And this fella has the cheek to talk about pollution and about limiting emissions and all this stuff and giving out about fossil fuel. He is in the business of using fossil fuel to, to, to build wind farms. That's what his business is. And yet... He, he's, he's, he, wants, he wants some action taken to stop that, to stop his own business. It shows you the pure, mixed-up hypocrisy of these people. <coughs> Prices have gone too low, said O'Connor, the founder and former chief executive of Main Street Renewable Power. Now, that would indicate that he's gone from there. I'm not just too sure has he left that company. I'm just a bit... And haven't checked that out. The whole of the industry right now is on its knees. Doesn't your heart bleed for them? Oh, doesn't my heart bleed for poor Eddie? Oh, Lord, doesn't it bleed? They're on their knees. And the whole supply industry, the whole supply side of it, the, the, the turbine makers and all that, the average profitability of a wind turbine, in, of, the inter, of the wind turbine industry is zero. There it's there, folks, zero. And there it's up there. Zero. Now, here we have an admission by Eddie O'Connor, that the profit is zero. Well, I got news for you, Eddie. It's a lot worse than that. It's a massive loss running into 222 million euros in 26 counties in Ireland alone. Now, so the average profitability of it is zero. He told the offshore and floating wind Europe in London. It must be offshore and floating wind as some kind of an association in London. In London. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, O'Connor, who built the Irish-based mainstream renewable power into a global force, it'll be a global farce eventually. I always said it was a global farce, not a force. In renewable development, claims the sector would struggle to achieve its potential for as long as the core profitability was below the oil and gas sector, which continues to look like a profitable bet to investors. The industry ha has to be more profitable than the alternatives, and currently we're not. So... He's saying his windmills are an alternative. 
fossil fuel. An alternative. A 20% load factor. We have reduced the number of turbine suppliers uh, in the western part of the world from 15 to 4 in 10 years. Two of these are absolutely with no profit and that backs up the Enercon situation. And two of them are barely profitable. And at less and a lot less profitable than the oil industry. So he's crying that we have more and more of these installed all over the world. O'Connor said he feared the project development sector had returned to a position similar to seen around the year 2000 when bids were low and nothing got built. No, Eddie. There was no subsidies then. This craze only took go off about the turn of the century, about 1987 or thereabouts. It was nothing to do with um, um, it was nothing to do with bids. It was to do with the fact the subsidies weren't already in place. We are right back now at there now. So we're back to square one. In other words, he admits we're back to square one. All of this has been in vain. We're seeing in India, Mexico and possibly Brazil. So he moved out into these countries. And I thought South Africa as well. And effectively, these countries were doing grand. They were doing grand. And uh, all of a sudden, he arrives in telling them this baloney that they can make electricity from the wind, which you can't. And now they're going bottom up as well. And we, I'd like him to address the issue of the LFS movement in France. And there have been protests in other places like Ecuador when they removed the, the subsidy on fossil fuel. And there's something else going on in Bolivia, I think. So the people are not taking this. They're not taking his, his increased prices. So he's the cause of it. It's not the people of Brazil. He went in with this, this gibberish, old hype, and got away with it by a, a, a sleeping media and a compliant media and compliant stupid governments. The mainstream founder warned that the market situation is hobbling wind's ability to meet enormous build-up needed to address climate change. He's worried now about the climate. A level that he said was far beyond current projections and progress. We have to look now at we have to look at how we are going to build a sustainable industry before we can decarbonize. Well, the, my advice is get out of it, Indy, Eddie. Close them down because they're not decarbonizing. They're massive users of fossil fuel right through their lives in the building stage and everything else. We're looking at an industry that can transform the whole electricity sector. He is some bluffer. He is some bluffer. But because the superstructure isn't right, because the profitability isn't right, because we don't pay for pollution, then there's there we're in real trouble. We're not going we're not doing anything like that we need to if we're going to save the planet for succeeding generations. So he's worried about succeeding generations, right? What about the pension funds, Eddie? They're gone. Huh? Now, just to go into a little bit of number crunching here, it's 12 minutes. Remember, there's 8766 six hours in the year. It's about 22% we'll give rah rah here. It's really 20%, but we'll give it at 22%. You could have a windy year again. Nobody knows. I multiply that by 11, 11 megawatts, which rah rah is. We take one off, you take a little off. No wind farm generates its full um, uh, rated capacity. No big problem there. It's probably accepted. Not a big deal. So, anyway, that gives us 2 1 2 3. Uh, that's two one two three megawatt hours wholesale electricity produced by Ra Ra. Okay, so that doesn't change in anything that comes hereafter. Now, if we take that then at seventy six cent, I'm uh, sorry, seventy six euros, or seventy six cent a unit, seventy six euros per megawatt hour for that there, we see the profit of Ra Ra. This is what we're likely to get is not the profit, the income, the income before expenses is one six one two. Uh, 188. Now, I'll go over this because somebody might want to number crunch these themselves, and there it's there. So, you're multiplying this figure here, which is common, which is constant, by 76 to give you the income. 16121188. Okay, now, the expenses out of that are 76%, and uh, so, or, uh, and uh, at, at that, at that load factor, and at that uh, price, it's 76 Set the expenses therefore is one two two five six eight two one two two five six eight two. So that's common in all wind farm accounts. The, the expenses are seventy to seventy six percent. Okay, now. So now we we look at it if it, if they were getting a hundred. Now I want to just explain one thing very very uh, important here, and I'll take uh, I'll take this bulb, and this this zapper here right now. We'll say that this here is wind uh, price, and this here is fossil fuel price. I might switch them around now just to get my head around. Now, this is wind, 
here and this is fossil fuel okay now wind gets 76 pence cent sorry 76 euros per megawatt hour 76 euros per megawatt hour irrespective of anything else 76 euros at the moment right wind uh black fossil fuel powered electricity gets an average of 57 euros it goes between 100 uh, 40 and 120 but the average is 57 so right wind gets 76 euros fossil fuel conventional generation gets uh 57 euros so the price of this is always lower the price of the fossil fuel is lower now so that's the way it is this last 10 years now however the way they have it set up is the way the refit works that if the fossil fuel price goes up to a par and then goes higher wind doesn't stay the same and this is the lie consumers were told we were told that if fossil fuel went right up wind stayed there and you had this constant 76 euros wind energy to to help you tide over a, a sudden spike or a long-term spike in fossil fuel prices that's not what happens now watch my hands again this is vital to understand this this is wind at 76 cent now this is fossil fuel power at, at 57 cent at the minute now fossil fuel goes up and when it reaches a power the wind goes up with it goes right up again now just to get that through it is not not it is not this it is not this situation that the two run independently it's this situation the two go up together once it reaches power they go on up and no matter how high the fossil fuel goes the wind goes up the same and this makes a complete lie of wind saving us money and being a, a hedge against increased uh, fuel prices okay so now generally speaking the price of irish electricity per megawatt hour uh, is roughly the same as the oil price in dollars euro for dollar that's just a coincidence i think it's a slight correlation but just just throwing that in there now we see this constant number again what if uh, conventional power went to 100 well then the profit would be 2 on 2 on 300 okay what if it went to um what if it went to i just have to stop this to get me thing here so we see at 100 the ink the the profit is two the income is two one two one three hundred okay now at 150 the profit is two eight eight uh nine nine five oh two eight eight nine five oh okay so then we look at at um the expenses and i've added five percent on for each increment because if the prices of electricity goes up their expenses will go up because they have to pay for power use and all that sort of stuff so the thing will go up so the expenses are adjusted for any of this work in the house at 76 percent the expenses are one two two five six eight two at uh at a hundred that's at 76 cent a unit that's that figure i'll leave it there for you now you can see it at uh a hundred it's one two one million two hundred and eighty six nine six six one million two hundred and eighty six nine six six see it here and then at 150 it's one three four eight two five oh okay so there's a slight increase in the expenses as as the price of electricity goes up and i have to account for that it's just five percent right now so the expenses then uh, at the current price of 76 uh, the, uh, uh, and the 100 and the 150 that when you take the expenses away from the profit you have left over 386506 834 uh, 834 think that is and 1 million five hundred and thirty three thousand seven hundred so there it is there anyone can stop the camera and look at that so that's the residual you have the income you have the expenses and you have the you have the residual income then of that amount okay so then we look at what to pay in interest and I'm, there's 30 million of a loan apparently and i'm going for 1.5 percent which is unrealistic i'd say about paying more than that but that works out at 450,000 per year in interest on loans okay 450,000 a year on interest on loans and that's irrespective of what the income is they have to pay the interest okay so now we've paid no principal that's just the interest so now now we look at it that they're 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 
The operating profit there, less the, this interest, means they're making a loss at the current rate. At 100, they'd have 384, 333 left after, after paying the interest. And at 150, uh, they'd have 1033, 700. 1083, 1083, 700. Leave that there for you. Okay? So there it is there. So uh, we're at 20 minutes, it's getting a bit, I have to hurry up. So it's, uh, you see that there, that's what they have left over. That's what they have left over. Now, so we can see then at the 76 euros per megawatt hour, they make a loss. So they're, it's, they're, they're gone. At 100, they make a little profit of 384, a 333. And at 150, they will have a profit of 1083, 700. So I'll leave that there. Anyone can just stop and see it there. So with the hundred pound euros per megawatt hour, uh, they'll pay back their capital three million in seventy eight years, okay, and and one hundred and fifty per megawatt hour, they'll pay it back in twenty seven years, okay. It's even worse than I had in an earlier video, but anyway, it takes several times the lifetime of the wind farm. So there's the figure. So at 150 per megawatt hour, it takes 27 years to pay back the, the principal and therefore there's no money for, no joy. There's no, um, all, you, all you'd get is, a, if, you're, if you're a full investor in equity, all you'd get is a part of your original investment. Now we've went the whole hog and I'm saying, what would happen if the cost of conventional generation went up to 200 euros per megawatt hour and wind went up the same, because it has to? Well, the, 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 the residual profit there would be 2.833645. That's what they'd have left, right? And that would pay off the wind farm in 10 years. Roughly 10 years, right? It'd pay off the wind farm in 10 years, okay? That'd be normal for any business. So at 200 euros, uh, uh, with, with, with this left over, at the 200 euro rate, with this 2.833645, uh, for te the 10 remaining years would bring in uh, 28,324,000, 28,324,650, okay, so, um, just a second now, just that's it for So I just had to stop there for a second to get it machined. Um, yeah, so um, if you had 10 years left over after the wind farm was finished paying off its principal, no, it's, it's, it's interest, you'd have, uh, you'd have a residual amount of 28 million for the full 10 years, two, three, four, okay? Now, that then, if you work that out, what it will allow, it's 4.4%, okay, 4.4%. And that's very low. That's not good. a good dividend to bring on. But just to give an example, if you invested 30 million at 6%, 30 million at 6%, okay, uh, at 6%, it'd be 1.8 million a year. And if we say the wind farm lasted 21 years, we'll give it an extra year, 21 year, years. So you'd end up with 37 million then. You'd have 37 million uh, for your original 30 million so you invest the 30 million you have 37 million back okay and uh, if you divide 37 by 30 uh, you get uh, 1.23 uh, times 1.23 times and that means that a thousand euros invested will bring in 1,230 1,230 in 20 years so you'd put in a thousand now and you'd get back a total of one thousand two hundred and thirty. And this is the very low rate. Uh, uh, so essentially a thousand, a thousand invested at the beginning of the lifespan of the wind farm. I, I said 21 years, we're giving it an extra year, is what will bring you bring you back one, two, three, oh. And that's all you get. It's not much, but in the current very low interest rate, it'd be enough. Now remember, to do that. You'd have to have electricity at 200 euros per megawatt hour for all electricity. And it's currently at 57 euros. Now, there'd then be a markup. There's currently 2.6 times the markup between the wholesale price and the unit price you pay in your house. Okay. 
Now, whether what amount of a markup you'd have to have, I don't know. But you could see anyway that we are currently paying about 26 cent. I worked out yesterday, you'd be paying at least 42 cent a unit and maybe more for that. And that's completely unsustainable for industry, for homes, for everything else. An average house uses 5,000 euros, 5,000 domestic units, kilowatt hours in a year. 5,000. So you can multiply 5,000 by uh, 26 to get the present price. And you can multiply it by 42 to get the difference now in this. It's, it's, a big, it's, it's, it's a huge amount. So you can see that that's only one quarter of the total energy market. So Eddie wants to bring that the price up. So essentially, the prices would have to go up from 57 to 200. And that's just a quarter because electricity is just a quarter. There's three quarters for transport, heating, refrigeration, all the other needs. So to satisfy, uh, uh, for, to satisfy uh, Eddie, uh, you can take your current energy prices, whatever you're paying, uh, and multiply it by four to give Eddie the chance of making anything. And all you'd make as a shareholder for that is, uh, is you put in your thousand and you get out 1.23. So I'm very sorry if I went into a lot of number crunching there. But it just shows how ridiculous this whole thing is. Remember again, I think the biggest lesson you will take from this is that if the fossil fuel price uh, it, it, is, it is currently below the wind, as it rises until it, 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 it reaches parity, it reaches the equal level, then both go up. And that's how he wants to get his money. And uh, why he, this is because there was no assessment under the SEA directive. There was no assessment. This was squealed at, roared at and bawled at by me and many others. We said this couldn't go on. And now the wind energy is on its knees. After an investment of 6.5 billion euros, the whole lot is not worth anything. And they're really overvalued. And the problem now is what happens to AIB, which is now going to put in 5.5 billion in the next five years, a billion a year. They've taken a bond out. Presumably guaranteed by the government. And we don't know what they're paying. And they're going to give a big portion of this to wind energy. Not at all. But they're going to give a big portion of this to wind energy. Now, the same Eddie O'Connor uh, had a big interest in Nart Nagiha, an offshore wind farm in Scotland. He sold it to the French. And the French, there was a condition that someone else had buy half. And who's coming in? Only the ESB. So now we have Bordemone already got a bailout. We have we have the wind farms getting a bailout already, as I said, by their parent companies. And the next thing to watch for, and John Dooley and I talked about this, is DSB. Two years, two years, if we don't have a collapse before that. And if this is indicative of the asset values of the banking sector uh, in, in Europe and, in, and, and worldwide even, we're, we're in for a terrible point. What are they going to do when they discover the 6.5 billion gone that can't be got back? And... The pension fund's been pumped in and they're bringing out laws now to force you to uh, invest in a pension. They're desperate. The government is actually desperate at the moment. It doesn't look it. They're not talking about it. But we see the signs. They withdrew the, the grant aid for the retrofitting homes. And they've been warned they can't pay for the health service till the end of the year. They're borrowing for that. And there's various warnings. And there's warnings now coming out of Germany. Bosch is moving to Hungary. The big Bosch Corporation for car parts. And we see the thing is slowly grinding to a halt. I think we are vindicated. I think Eddie O'Connor's statement uh, vindicates uh, what we're saying. And it's now a big concern of everyone. And should be. What's going to happen? What are we going to, ha going to happen if the uh, 2008 and, and, uh, crash comes again? But for now, we were vindicated. The wind industry is on its knees. And uh, I, for one, am not in the least bit sorry. The quicker we get rid of it and get out of it and stop this blooming nonsense called ology uh, that they're going on with, uh, the quicker, the better we get back to some normality. There's going to be a lot of hardship over this. So, folks, thank you very much. That was a difficult one to do. That was a difficult one to get the numbers uh, uh, right, right for. But remember, at 200 euros per megawatt hour, as opposed to 57 at the minute, uh, you would all you'd get after 21 years investment for a thousand euros is 1,230. That's a very, very poor return on money. And uh, 
This is the reason. They're getting no one to invest. And don't forget when you're calculating this in your mind. At the end of the 21 years.